Okay, hello everybody. My name's Lori. I am a grower here at Wickham's Fruit Farm. We're located on the North Fork of Long Island out in Kutchog. Um, today we're in our greenhouse. So we have our fantastic tomato crop over here. We also have our cucumbers. So we're growing them inside of a greenhouse. It is considered uh, covered crop production. Um, it helps us control the environment to it. So it helps us with disease and insect management, and it also helps us with our irrigation. Um, so it's a controlled environment where we have to do all the inputs to it, but we actually get a better, more reliable crop than we do if we plant it out in the field. Also growing the tomatoes inside, we have a heater in here, so we're actually able to get a good two month jump on the season. Um, so these tomatoes here, I'll give you just a little background. They were planted January 4th. We're about that time in April. So these guys are about four months old already. So we're gonna have tomatoes in about another month. So we get a huge jump on the system. We're also able to grow them vertically, the tomato plants. So they're actually gonna be taller than what you would normally see in your greenhouse or your own backyard garden. Um, they're actually, we train them, we clip them up on the wires and the plants themselves will get to about 10, 15 feet tall by the time they're done growing. Um, and every about six inches or so, we'll have another cl cluster of fruit coming out on it. And from this one cluster of fruit, we'll get about four to five tomatoes on it. Um, talking about different kinds of tomatoes, these are called beefsteak tomatoes, which are just a wide range of tomatoes. They are tomatoes that generally are eight ounces and above. They can go anywhere from about a half a pound to a pound to even two pounds for a tomato. So you get one nice tomato and that's it. You have a slice and it's a tomato sandwich for lunch. Um, so these guys right here are actually a yellow tomato. Um, yellow tomatoes just have a different acidity level than they do with red tomatoes, which kind of lends to be a little bit sweeter in flavor because of the less acid. Um, so people that have acid reflux issues generally need to take a Tums after they have some tomato sauce. We recommend the yellow tomatoes because it has lower acidity levels, so you don't have that issue of after eating the tomatoes. In a protected greenhouse area, we don't have our natural bees to do our pollination. So we actually buy bumblebee hives for pollination purposes. So we will release the bumblebees into the greenhouse and the bumblebees will help us pollinate our plants. So there has to be a constant supply of pollen for the bees to remain active and to help us out with this project. So we need to constantly be having new flowers. So as you see the tomato plant growing in height, you'll see that about every six inches or so will be a new fruit cluster developing. So there's a constant food source for the bumblebees because the bumblebees, this is, this is their food. We get their labor efforts by having the fruit. So you'll see the little bees come pollinate a little plant. They'll just kind of do a little jig on top of the flower, move to the next one. And then within a couple days, you'll actually start seeing fruit set, which all that means is a fruit starts to form from the pollination principles. And the fruit essentially, once it gets pollinated, takes somewhere about a month or so for it to actually ripen up into something that we can eat. That does change a little bit depending on the amount of daylight we have, because daylight is also very essential to fruit production. Um, but pollination, if we did not have pollination, pollination, and if we did not have bees, we would not be having any fruit. Okay, so these are actually the busy bees that keep our greenhouses going. These are our bumblebee hives. We actually get them delivered every six to eight weeks to keep the hive fresh. Don't worry, we don't kill them. We just release it into the wild and they disappear into the natural bee population. Um, so these bees are busy little bees. They are responsible for all of our pollination, which in turn is responsible for all of our crop production. Um, the bees like to be kept in the shade, not too hot. And you can actually hear the buzzing going on. That's kind of their internal cooler. Um, it keeps the temperature regulated in there. So they also do have a little food in there. In case there's not enough flowers for them, they'll keep very well fed and very happy. So when you're producing crops inside of a greenhouse, you actually don't have too much outside influence of insects, but can notice in the background, the windows are open, so stuff does sneak in there. So what we do is we use a practice called integrative pest management. You'll see these little yellow sticky cars inside of our crop. They actually 
track little pest for us. So the pest will fly up to the yellow card thinking it's food, it gets stuck to it. So what we do is every couple days, come on out, collect the cards, and we actually count the insects on them. Now, not all bugs are bad bugs. We do have good bugs as well. So we, we take a quick poll of what is on the cards and we're able to determine if we have a good pest, which actually eats the bad pest, or if we have a bad pest, which a bad pest is defined as anything that inhibits crop production. So I'll give you a quick example. We have aphids. Aphids are actually will inhibit plant production by actually sucking out all the plant juices so the plant's not able to take in all the sunshine it needs for food. Um, aphids themselves, they kind of are very small. You can totally over miss them, but once the numbers get very bad, and actually will inhibit crop production on the crop. So we're able to gauge by using these sticky cards what problems we have in the house and also if we actually need to take care of it with some sort of chemical or environmental control.